Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Welcome to our second lecture. And please be prepared. Um, take out a piece of paper and write the answer for the following question. Right, based on this picture, so please explain the statement a fan creates the higher pressure and the open end of the duct has a lower pressure so the air flows out so you may um, explain based on um, the formula Q is equals to V times A so the A air flow is equal to the air velocity times the cross section of each uh, duck. So you may relate uh, that formula with this statement. Alright, Q is equal to A times V. So let us see the principles of air flow. In order to, for you to design a proper force air distribution system, you have to really understand how air flows in the dark, what factors affect the air flow, and the air flow design itself. And we know that from lecture one, uh, that air, air flow is actually caused by pressure differential between two points, and the flow will originate from an area of high pressure and proceed to the area of lower pressure and um, dark air moves according to three fundamental principles of physics which are conservation of mass conservation of energy and also the conservation of momentum all right so let's see um re let's recap what is what are again conservation of mass um law of uh, conservation of energy and law of conservation of momentum all right for conservation of mass we know that air mass is neither created nor destroyed and from this principle we know that the amount of the inlet air or the amount of um, air mass that coming into a junction in a ductwork is equal to the amount of air mass leaving the junction. So just imagine if there are 500 cars leaving from Ayrkero um, Toll and some of the cars um, went out um, at Nilai Toll some at Saramban toll and some at Sungai Besi toll but the addition of the um, amount or the addition of the total cost um, that going out from Nilai toll um, plus Saramban toll and uh, this, the Sungai Besi toll must be 500 which are uh, equals to the incoming cars at the I Karo toll. So the concept is just the same. And in most cases, the air in a duct is assumed to be incompressible. And this assumption overlooks the change of air density and um, this change of air density actually occurs as a result of pressure loss and flow in the ductwork but um, we just ignore it we just assume that this the, the air the flow the float air is incompressible and in ductwork the law of conservation of mass means that a duct size can be recalculated for a new air velocity using this simple equation um, we know Q1 is equals Q2 means um, the total uh, inlet air is equal to the total um, air flow rate that, that is going out um, that means V1A1 is equals to V2A2 and from here 
we can calculate the new velocity um, at the position of v2 is equals to v1 times a1 over a2 where v is velocity and a uh, a is the area what about law of con energy conservation conserve what does it mean conserve that means it cannot disappear it can only be converted from one form to another just now air mass is conserved now the energy is conserved and Bernoulli's equation in its simple form shows that for an elemental flow stream the difference in total pressures between two points in a duct is equal to the pressure loss between these points um, that means that pressure loss um, between point 2 and 1 is equals to total pressure 1 minus the total pressure 2 and the airflow also follows the law or uh, the the law of conservation of momentum and in this conservation of momentum law we know that a body will maintain its state of rest or uniform motion unless it is compelled by another force to change that state and this law is very useful to explain the flow the flow behavior in a dark systems fitting there are two types of fluid flow which are laminar flow and also turbulent flow and as for laminar flow the flow is parallel to a boundary layer and for turbulent flow the flow is perpendicular near the center of the duct and parallel near the outer edges of the duct most hashback applications fall in the transition range between laminar and turbulent flow and it is called transitional flow all right now let's see the friction effects uh, if friction effects are known also known as friction loss hl is a reduction in total air pressure or you can say it is pressure drop or pressure loss due to the friction of the air moving through a duct and this friction loss depends on the shape of the duct in straight section of duct work the loss is in static pressure due to the friction flow resistance in the duct and that is as a result of air turbulence and roughness of the duct and static loss of straight section duct can be calculated by using following formula which is HL is equals to L times CL hundred and this HL or static loss is in inch water gauge unit and L is a given length of the duct and CL100 is the friction factor per 100 feet all right and this um, friction factor per 100 feet can be determined through friction friction chart or duct calculator all right just now we have seen static loss now let's come to dynamic loss what are the difference uh, differences between these two all right static loss is for straight duct and dynamic loss is um, loss due to the changes in direction of duct and changes in cross-section area of the duct which means dynamic loss are um, happen or occurs whenever there is um, fittings or there is um, transformation all right when there is um, changes in area or direction of the uh, airflow and the dynamic loss are calculated from the air velocity and a loss coefficient for type of duct fitting transformation and 
the dynamic loss can be calculated by using the formula HL is equals to C times the quadratic of velocity of um, airflow over 4005 and C is a dynamic loss coefficient for the type of duct fitting or for transformation and we will look at uh, a table um, just in a bit to see how to um, extract C from the table all right duct fitting are commonly used in HVAC to change the right direction of airflow and there are more than 220 types of duct fitting database developed by ASHRAE and the most common and standard duct fitting type is round or rectangular duct elbow with typically angle of 90 degree or 45 degree and radius of curvature all right this is very important um, please pay attention right whenever you calculate C you have to get the ratio um, of the radius over the diameter and please be informed that the radius is actually the radius of the curvature of the elbow um, whereas diameter is the diameter of the elbow itself All right again radius is the radius of the curvature of the elbow and the diameter D is the diameter of the elbow itself right so it is convenient to determine the dynamic loss coefficient for the round duct fitting through this uh, equation and through this table all right please be informed that this table is only um, for elbow which has radius 90 degrees 90 degree so this is a loss coefficient for round duct with radius 90 degree elbow all right and c is equals to k theta times c prime and c prime is the coefficient for 90 degree elbow and k theta is the um it's not angel <laughs> it's angle angle correction factor sorry there's um misspelling there all right and the angle coefficient or k theta we have two different tables here and the k theta can be uh, uh, read from this table if you have um, you know the angle of the um, elbow let's say here is 90 degree for this case it's 90 degree and k theta is then um, has value of 1 all right so if you know the the ratio the radius over diameter for example the ratio is 0 0.75 um, and for this 90 degree elbow we know that uh, the C prime is equals to 0 0.33 so to get the C or dynamic loss coefficient then just multiply 0 0.33 times one just now for k theta and we will have c is equals to 0 0.33 all right we will see example examples later all right dynamic loss that results from transformation okay this one this part of um, uh, fittings uh, we can say this is a transformation from a uh, small diameter to a larger diameter or from larger diameter to a smaller diameter okay this part we call transformation 
and the dynamic loss that results from this transformation it can be calculated by identi identifying the ratio of the entrance area to the exhaust area and how do we know which one is the entrance area and which one is the uh, is the exhaust area all right you have to look at the direction of the flow and in this case the direction of the flow of the airflow is from left to right which means D0 is the entrance area and D1 is the exhaust area let's say if the airflow is in the opposite direction uh, from right to left that means the entrance area is D1 and the exhaust area is D0 all right, just uh, be calm and let's stick to this picture. So the ent entrance area is D0 and D1 is the exhaust area as the airflow is from left to right. All right, so if you know the diameter of the duct, the cross section of the duct, then you can calculate the area of the duct by using pi times the radius um, the power of 2 to the power of 2 so you will have the area for A0 and please calculate the area for A for D1 too so um, we will denote it as A1 then you will have the ratio A0 over A1 you will have the ratio then you can um, find the C value, C theta values for this transition. And what is theta here? All right, this is angle of the transformation. Let's say the the angle of this side is fifteen degree, and the area of, uh, the angle of this side is also fifteen degree then you will have 30 degree in total so let's say the ratio of the entrance area to the exhaust area is 0 0.5 and if you have uh, the angle of transformation is 30 then the C theta values is 0 0.32 that is your loss coefficient for that particular transition Alright, this is a friction chart and this friction chart is a chart that shows the relationship between the air flow rate here, the air quantity, um, this between air flow rate, the static pressure drop or friction loss, the uh, duct size or duct diameter here and also the velocity, the air velocity. So the purpose of using this friction chart is to find a duct size whenever two values are given. For example, it, it, it is given a friction loss of um, any duct and its air quantity or CFM. Then you may find the duct diameter. And to find the round duct size required, to provide the airflow at given static pressure drop, do apply these following procedures. First, you locate the airflow rate. Let's say the airflow rate is 200 CF, uh, 2000 CFM at the bottom of the, of the chart. Then, second one is by locating the static pressure at the left side. Let's say um, you know that the static pressure drop is 0 0.1 then just um, put a line here and here and whenever it intersects there is um, the size of the duct and the velocity 
all right for example again um, we have 1000 CFM uh, the air quantity and the friction loss is um, 0 0.2 inch of water per 100 feet then where where it intersects you can actually sorry you can actually find the duct diameter here is um, about 12 12 uh, 12 inch and you may also find the velocity of the air and duct calculator is also another tool to determine the round duct size shape and the best thing is you may convert the round duct size to the rectangular or square size once it is known at least two parameters values such as CFM the air quantity and also the velocity air velocity in feet per minute or you may also find the duct size by knowing the friction loss and um, the air quantity any any um, either this one or the, that one right let's see what are the effect of um, altitude on density the air density is defined as mass per unit volume and this uh, air density is affected by two factors such as temperature and also the elevation above sea level and a standard air is defined as clean dry air with density of um, about 1.2 kilogram per meter cubic with the barom uh, barometric pressure at sea level of 101.32 kilopascal and a temperature of 21 degrees celsius and in case where the conditions are different or other than the standard air then it is recommended to adjust static pressure by multiplying air density um, with correction factor which is can be found from um, at the table table next table All right this is air um, density correction factors and if you know what are the air temperature and you know what are the elevation um, how how many feet above the sea level then you may find the correction factor let's say the temperature is 200 degree Fahrenheit and the elevation is um, 5,000 feet above sea level then you will have the correction factor 1.5 then this correction factor you have to multiply it with air density to get the new air density for that particular place all right now let's look at example we have example one here the air is flowing through a 75 feet straight duct which has a size of 36 inch times 12 inch the duct is traversed and the pressure measurement taken at various cross-sectional location and average total pressure PT is 2 inch water gauge and uh, static pressure PS is 1.75 inch water gauge are measured and please determine the air velocity air flow rate in the duct all right first you have to know that the total pressure is equals to assess the static pressure plus um, dynamic pressure And by applying this equation, we will get the dynamic pressure 
by um, subtracting the static pressure from the total pressure which is equals to 2 minus 1.75 inch water gauge you will get the dynamic pressure is 0 0.25 inch water gauge and by having this uh, dynamic pressure or PV you can calculate um, or determine the air velocity because we know that uh, dynamic pressure is equals to the quadratic of velocity over 4005 and by rearrange this equation you will get your air velocity which is equals to 2002 feet per minute and now you already have the air velocity and it is asked to calculate the air flow rate and we know that air flow rate is equals to Q uh, equals to air velocity times the cross-sectional area and we already have um, V and the cross-section of the area is 36 times 12 inch um, inch the part to the power of 2 and to convert the unit from inch square to feet square you have to divide with uh, 144 um, to get feet square All right so you will have the air flow rate is 6006 feet cubic per minute or this is also equals to CFM so we have um, the air flow rate is 6006 CFM all right now let's look at a, an example another example what is the friction loss for the entire length of ductwork which is given in the previous example one so you may have to refer to the example one for the data and the friction loss for the entire length of ductwork since it is a straight duct so we just use um, this one formula um, friction loss is equals to length times the loss coefficient per 100 feet and after determine the friction factor CL 100 feet from duct calculator or friction chart or whichever you like then um, you will get CL is equals to 0 0.21 inch water gauge per 100 feet alright please refer to duct calculator or friction chart okay just now I've mentioned about two quantities if you have these two quantities we have um, the air velocity and we also have the air flow rate so you will get 0 0.21 for this particular case alright Therefore, the friction loss for the entire length of duct work, um, you may just uh, multiply the length of the duct, which is 75 feet, times 0 0.21 inch water gauge per 100 feet. Please remember to put this 100 feet because sometimes uh, students um, forgot to forget to um, include this 100 feet so you will have to divide the 75 by 100 times 0 0.21 then you will have your friction loss for this uh, straight duct which has 75 feet length um, is equals to 0 0.1575 inch water gauge All right now let's look at example 3 we have a 75 feet section of 24 inch diameter duct 
okay here we have 24 diameter duct and it has 4000 CFM of air at standard condition flowing through it so you won't have to um, put any correction factor or anything just use um, as it is so the, the duct now makes two turns 90 degree turns one's here and another one uh, is here before it transitions to before it transits to 18 inch diameter duct and runs for another 24, uh, 25 feet as shown here right and the elbow are 90 degree both elbows are 90 degree and have a radius of 18 inch okay this um, data you will need later to to read uh, the C from the table and the total angle of convergence for this transition is 30 okay for this transition we have 15 degree at one side and 15 degree at another side so in total we have uh, 30 degree so now what is the pressure loss for the entire section of duct and fitting and please note that one feet is equal to equals to 12 inch all right so you may use friction chart uh, to to find uh, for the straight section of the duct to find a loss coefficient for transition um, or but I prefer to use the ductilator or duct calculator and it's pretty easy actually and loss coefficient for transition may be obtained from loss coefficient for transition tables that I've shown in previous uh, slides and the loss for fitting may be obtained from loss coefficient for round radius 90 degree elbow all right first um, please recall to calculate the friction loss for static uh, pressure for the straight duct is equals to length of the duct times the loss coefficient per hundred feet and for fitting and transformation you also have to calculate and add up to the um, friction static friction loss later to get the total friction loss and the formula for fitting and transformation friction loss is equals to um, C or the friction friction uh, loss coefficient times the quadratic of the velocity over 4005 this is the air velocity the V therefore it is required to calculate first the air velocity and determine the loss coefficient in each section all right since we have two areas um, first we just calculate the air the cross-section area of the 24 inch diameter duct and second one we calculate the the cross-section area for 18 inch diameter duct and we'll have 3.14 and 1.7 feet square um, respectively and hence the velocity for 4000 cfm all right we know that um, q is equals to va and the q is 4000 cfm and a we have here so we make a clip for um, for each diameter duct um, we make a clip the air velocity that flows through it all right so for V um, 24 or the for the duct that has 24 inch diameter the velocity is 4000 over 3.14 and we get 1274 feet from uh, fpm feet 
per minute and for the other section the other diameter which is 18 inch diameter duct the, velo the velocity of air that flows through it is equals to 4000 over 1.7 and we get 2353 fpm and the loss for elbow uh, which has radius 18 inch therefore by referring to the table that I've shown you in the previous slide and loss coefficient for 90 degree elbow is right so first we have to know the the ratio of the radius to the diameter and in the question it is given that the radius of the elbow is 18 inch and um, since the involved elbow is or only um, at the section um, at the 24 inch diameter duct section so we just um, calculate C for one diameter and we know C is equals to K theta times C prime and if you have the ratio of the radius to the diameter of the duct which is 18 inch over 24 inch diameter duct is equals to 0 0.75 and from the table you know the angle is 90 degree so you will get k theta is equals to 1 so for C you just have to multiply 1 which is k theta times 0 0.33 which is the C prime so you will have your C or your loss coefficient is equals to 0 0.33 all right so where do I get this 0 0.33 you, you may you may refer to the table you already know the the ratio of radius to the diameter which is 0 0.75 and just look at the angle 90 degree you will get 0 0.33 alright I hope you, you you get my message right and then we now make a click the loss for transition and first we have to calculate the loss coefficient for transition and we know that the angle is 30 degree 15 at each side so multiply by 2 now we have 30 degree and we know that the ratio of the um, entrance area to the exhaust area is equals to 3.14 the here um, the area of, of 24 inch uh, diameter duct to the area of the 18 inch diameter duct which is 1.76 now we get 1.78 and you may um, round it up to 2 and you may now look at the table you have um, the ratio of entrance area to the exhaust area equals to 2 you will have 0 0.19 and you may round it up to 0 0.2 because in air distribution there is no um, exact um, I mean the value doesn't make a large difference so you may round it up if it is um, just slightly difference from um, before it is rounded up all right and loss for the strict section so now we have loss for elbow we, we already have um, the loss coefficient for um, the transition and now we look at the loss for strict section you may also obtain from friction chart but I prefer to use ductilator because it is um, easier to the eye All right. you may um, first set your you know that the CFM is 4000 and just go to the um, round duct diameter window and set there it is um, 24 inch diameter then you can read the friction loss for uh, per hundred feet of the duct 
um, where it where it intersects at 4000 CFM and you will get 0 0.09 inch water gauge for 24 inch diameter duct and for 18 inch diameter duct just again go to the ductilator and set to 18 inch uh, round duct diameter and please read what is the friction loss um, whenever it is uh, 4000 CFM right from here I'll get I uh, get 0 0.39 inch water gauge so I hope you have ductilator with you please be prepared so that you, it is easier for you to solve the questions alright now we get every um, loss coefficient for each equation so now we just have to put everything in the formula alright and the losses for the entire section of the duct work first for the straight duct by using this formula for 20, 24 inch diameter duct we will have um, 0 0.14 inch water gauge because we know the length of the duct which is 75 and we know also the the coefficient loss which is 0 0.09 per per hundred feet right just put it in the formula and you get 0 0.14 inch water gauge and for 18 inch um, diameter duct the length is 25 and now we know that the loss coefficient is 0 0.39 per hundred feet so just put it all together in the formula and you will get 0 0.01 inch water gauge right that is settled for straight duct now let's calculate for fitting and transformation by using the formula HL is equals to um, loss coefficient times the uh, the quadratic of the air velocity over 4005 and for the 90 degree elbow we have two 90 degree elbows so you just have to add it up later right and the C we know that it is 0 0.33 for the elbow times the air velocity that we get um, from the previous calculation for um, 24 inch diameter duct which is 1274 why because um, we always see um, the entrance velocity of um, the elbow alright so we have 0 0.03 inch water gauge so just multiply by 2 because we have two um, exactly the same elbows at the same diameter duct and now for the transition um, we have C um, just now 0 0.2 and the entrance velocity for transition is 1274 please 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 do not confuse with um, the air velocity um, of the 18 inch diameter duct because we always look at the entrance air velocity all right so you will get for the transition you will get the um, the losses the loss for transition is 0 0.02 inch water gauge and the pressure loss for the entire section you just have to um, do the addition process for every each of them so 0 0.14 plus 0 0.01 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.02 and you will get the pressure loss for the entire section is equals to 0 0.23 inch water gauge all right i think um that is all for this time for this lecture two so see you again in lecture three thank you and assalamualaikum